What's going on, people? Today's topic is a little relevant. It's a little heavy. It's a little fucked up. But that's what this channel's about. It's a lot of little fuckery. Ghetto is a mindset. It's something I've noticed years and years ago. You could take a person, black, white, green, purple, whatever, because typically when you say ghetto, the connotation is it's black. There's ghettos around the world that contain all cultures. Black, white, go to the Eastern Bloc of Europe. There's ghettos up there. Top of the world. So, understand, it's a mindset. Because I know people that were born in the ghetto and they get out the ghetto but at times exhibit ghetto behavior. And I ask myself, why? You're out together. Like, I didn't grow up in the ghetto. I grew up in a small country-ass town. And going to the military and meeting people was like, oh, you country. Well, I'm going to tell you something. I'd rather be country than fucking ghetto. Because, see, this is the thing. Ghetto is fucking hard to get out, regardless of educational attainment, regardless of income level. It is extremely hard to get out of a person if they want to let it go, that is, because you can get a person that through some talent, special ability that they earn a tremendous amount of money and they move, quote, into a better neighborhood. And they're going to take those ghetto mentalities, that ghetto attributes with them in their neighborhood. I lived in some very nice neighborhoods that had some ghetto-ass people. Give you an example. Move in, three, you know, well, when the economy went south, houses were four or five hundred thousand. People could get in between 180 to some 150. People move in, right? They don't go out and get temporary blinds. No, 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 no. Those bitches hang sheets on the windows. Sheets. This is where I stand. If your ass can afford a house, you can afford fucking curtains and blinds. If you're putting sheets on the window, you barely got in that bitch. And there will be problems down the road. Sheets. Don't cut the grass. I saw one of the funniest things that just had me rolling. Person buys his house. And I noticed that every month there seemed to be a new person in this house. I'm not going to say their ethnic background. I'm going to let you guess. Every month someone new showed up. And they didn't leave. Kind of like the Roach Motel. They check in, but they don't check out. I am walking, because I'm a walker. I'm not a runner. I typically walk to clear my mind. And I'm walking, and I hit the corner. And behind this house, I see someone has installed clothing lines. Many of you are like, what, what the hell is that? Growing up in the country... You know, people may have had a washer, didn't have a dryer, so they would just go hang their stuff up outside, and you see the pants and the stuff blowing in the wind. I'm asking myself, why do these people have a clothing line hung up in the back of their yard between some trees with some bloomers and some bras and some other things on them? Today's dryers have something called a gentle cycle. No heat, fluff only. What are you washing that you need? Then I see that another person has taken up residence in this house that I've never seen before. At one point, I think there was 24 of those motherfuckers up in there. I'm like, what is going on? And then... It just got worse and worse. I come home. There's a car in the driveway. 
And they're like, Glendon, what's wrong with a car in the driveway? The bitch was on blocks! 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 Let's put it this way. I got the fuck out of there so fast because when that happens with one house, it's like an infectious disease and it will spread because people driving in the neighborhood will see that new people and they're like, oh, that's okay. That's cool. That's all right. Hmm, I may want to move here. The gentrification of a nice neighborhood. Whereas the other thing that causes a lot of ire is the gentrification of a bad neighborhood, which is starts with two gay white males go in, they build up the property values, and then people are like, oh God, no, this is so horrible. Gentrification is killing the natural character of the neighborhood. Oh God, it's killing it. You know, fuck making the hood better. Let that bitch stay fucked up. We don't want any gentrification. We don't want anyone to move in and make this bitch better and increase the prices. No, we just want this shit to be low cost, free, and ghetto fi But back to the larger issue. Ghetto is a mindset. It is a rabid mindset. It is not your skin color. It is not where you were born. It is not how much money you have. There is this fascination with bullshit. Total and other bullshit. I was watching a video. A young guy. He's doing really well for himself. And he did a video and it's just I'm just like looking at what was thrown in the video because the guy is bright. He's incredibly bright, incredibly talented. But in his short film, I'll just say his name, Donald Glover, you know, he's a tremendous guy. He did this uh, clapping for the wrong reasons, had Trinidad James and some other stuff, had a stripper, not a stripper, a porn star. And I was just like, okay, one, he's a young guy with a lot of money, a lot of talent. Maybe if I was 24, 26 years old today, I might have a porn star in my video. Probably not. But anyway, and I'm looking at this, and they're in this opulent mansion. It's not a big house. It's a mansion with zero sub-zero refrigerators and stuff. And there is, they're creative people, and they're doing it. And, you know, like Trinidad James and people talk. I think that's like one of the most burnt-up pieces of human beings I ever saw. You know, I've heard he's brilliant and all this stuff, whatever. I don't know what this fascination is looking so fucked up that no one wants to stand next to you with some members of hip-hop. I don't get it. Lupe Fiasso, he can spit. Dude is clean. I go back to KRS one clean. I go back to... I mean, dudes were rappers and they said what was on their mind, but they were clean. They were well-dressed. They were well-groomed. Some of these people came from the, the ghetto, but they didn't have a ghetto mentality even though they lived in the ghetto because their mentality was that of an evolved human being. Once again, the ghetto is not just a place. These are it's a state of mind. For me. My paycheck is loaded right on my car. Too many computers going on here. But the ghetto is typically a state of mind. And I was looking at this and I was like, what is this fascination with this bullshit? It is... I'm at a point in my life that I can't listen to a lot of rap music and is it because the music is my, it's just the lyrics. I've always listened to lyrics. Always. I'll listen to lyrics first, music second. Other people listen to music first and then absorb the lyrics in their subconscious mind and wonder why they have fucked up thoughts. So I'm looking at this and I'm just like, and I sit back because it's a creative film and I'm just like, why do we need this ghetto stuff all the time? And understand. I'm a creative person. I understand the process. Ghettos are a part of the fabric of a life. And there's going to be movies and there's going to be books and there's going to contain ghettos and ghetto vocation because that's part of life. But there seems to be this push to make it a mainstream thing. I don't think that's cool. I don't think it's good. And I think there's a problem with that because 
we live in a country where there are many members that are fucking stupid. And they're not fucking stupid because they have to be. They're fucking stupid because they want to be. Don't want to pick up a book. Don't want to explore a new concept. That's part of ghettofication. Idly wasting a lot of time sitting around doing nothing but bullshit. That is a huge part of the ghetto mindset. Because when I saw those fuckers move in my neighborhood, I was one of the first ones to get the fuck out. And let's talk about that. Because, you know, growing up, when you don't have shit and you're on the outside looking in, you make some assumptions that you really don't have enough information to make because growing up I heard all this stuff, white flight. Now I'm gonna ask your I'm gonna ask you this question. I'm gonna ask you this question. You've worked hard. You've built a nice home for your family. You don't bother nobody. You come home and you see some bullshit. And you have the option to get the fuck out that neighborhood. Why would you stay? Because see, the thing is, if you were to go over and talk to the owners of the bullshit, the people who were manufacturing the bullshit, uh, the, the, the foreman in the bullshit factory, you get cussed out. Who are you to judge me? Who are you to judge me? Talking to me. I bought this house I'm not breaking the law. I can do what the fuck I want and fuck you. And then all that's going to do is increase the ghettofication. They're going to really clown out. They're going to put on the nose, the hair, the suit, and the big ass shoes. Because now they know that irks you. See, I actually tried to talk to people. And I realized something. There's a reason that certain things are priced high. To keep people the fuck out. Because people, I mean seriously, I'm just going to drop it to you like it came to me. When you don't have and you're on the outside looking in, you make these assumptions and it's based on what you think is going on. Versus what's really going on. Let's take all the labels off, let's take the colors off. If you had the ability to move, would you stay in a neighborhood that you saw that the bullshit was increasing? Probably not. <laughs> You're just not going to stay there. You, you, you wouldn't do it. Because you have options. And I'm going to do another video on this subject. Because it's something that I fucking hate. Because there's black folks and then there's niggers. And I, there's just people and there's good behavior and there's bad behavior. That delineation between one and the other... Is just a quick way for someone to be assigned a negative label based on racist mindsets. Because this is the thing. Black people are some of the most racist motherfuckers on the planet. And don't want to own that shit. Which is crazy. But with the ghetto mindset. There's a certain entitlement that comes with it. There's a certain level of high mediocrity I know that's kind of like an oxymoron there but it's true because the thing is I didn't really understand what was going on and how people were rating until I became a business owner and I started hiring motherfuckers oh my god Becky look at the fucking ghettoness and see I have had ghetto ass white people ghetto ass black people ghetto ass Hispanics and oddly enough I've recently run into some ghetto ass Asians which has fucking blown my mind which is mean the ghetto mindset is a cancer and if you're not careful you can catch that shit because understand I'm a I've always been an observer of humans the human conditions because I study people because the shit just fascinates me before 9-11, I used to go to the Hartsfield International Airport and go to the International Concourse and just sit there with my pen and paper and just watch people and just make up these stories and just see stuff. And I am seeing that hip-hop culture is very, very seductive. And there are parts of hip-hop 
that was based in beauty and actually trying to achieve something. And then there's another segment that's all about the ghetto. When I was a scrub and when I was really, really fucked up in the head, I was living in what's called a boarding house. And there was four of us in this boarding house at the particular time. That boarding house could have up to eight, but there was four. So life was pretty cozy and chill because we got along. So on Sundays, we used to cook and sit around and talk and drink and just chop up the events of life. And one guy who had a degree from Clark Atlanta, who had a halfway decent job, but he was born in... Bowen Homes, which no longer exists. They have eradicated, I think, just about all public housing in Atlanta. He was born there, and this man, with a degree, with the ability to climb up, I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk about that shit because there was a lot of wild things that happened in the boarding house, uh, a lot of crazy stuff. I just thought about that because uh, he brought a chick up in there, Asian chick. The shit was funny, but. He was born in Bowen Homes, and he was just talking about the people don't know the ghetto can be fun. And I'm just looking at him. I'm like, really? Yeah, people, you know, you just got to know how to hang in the ghetto, how to move and navigate in the ghetto. But you got a lot of fun in the ghetto. Why the fuck would you want to have a lot of fun in the ghetto when you can get the fuck out the ghetto? Then I started to think. I started thinking, okay, here's this guy. And then I started to understand him. He had evolved educationally. He evolved geographically. But he never left the ghetto mentally. And that was one of the biggest downfalls because he would start drinking. And he was an alcoholic. And he would go through these black moods. And, you know, he'd punk out some other people. But I was of equal size. And I mean, one night. And even when I was in the board house, I was working out. I had dumbbells and shit. I bought at yard sales. And one night, he was just like really rowdy. And I don't know if you ever had done dumbbell push-ups where you just like doing this. And I was in my room doing it. And the door was open. And he came in. And why are you always working out, motherfucker? Why are you always doing this? Why are you, you and your little scrubs and you like trying to be better than people? And I was like, if I get up. I'm coming up with this 35 pound dumbbell against your damn head because you were fucking scaring me. Then he just backed up and he stood down because we had that confrontational moment. And it was just like, whoa, ghetto mindset is very fucking dangerous because it is limited. It is so fucking limited because you have people who have learned how to ghetto, how to manipulate people, how to run game. And... That is seen as a fucking achievement. When I lived in the hood, I heard some things that also made sense. Talked to people. And one girl told me, she said, everything I need is here. I don't go between, I don't leave these streets. Never been on the fucking plane. Never been, I mean, there are a lot of people who don't ever go anywhere. And that is part of the ghetto mindset because... When you go somewhere and you do different things and then expose to new people, expose to new concepts, it's going to change you. But people who are with the ghetto mindset don't feel that they need to change. They feel that some parts of assimilation, and let me really address that. You can assimilate into American culture and mainstream and still maintain your heritage or pride. Asians do that shit all the time. Jewish people do that shit all the time. Many people from the Caribbean do that shit all the time. Matter of fact, a lot of people from the Caribbean do a tremendous job of maintaining their heritage and culture while running many businesses, which is a part of the assimilation and understanding the American dream. So don't give me that bullshit that you, I don't want to assimilate because I'm going to lose me and all my... Fuck no, you're not going to lose it if you want to hold on to it. You don't want to fucking change because that kettle of my shit's in your head like, Fuck those bitches. We like being mediocre. We like it because it's easy. So, next time someone tries to give you that bullshit like the ghetto ain't that bad or, you know, you need to learn how to navigate the ghetto and all this bullshit, you need to get the fuck out the ghetto. You need to actually realize something. That to do better, you must think better.
and thinking better will also lead you to look around and realize that some of the people that you're dealing with don't need to be in your fucking life. That's the cold, harsh truth. I have only kept a handful, I mean, like that many people that knew me from when I was younger. Only a handful made the journey. Because everybody's not for everybody and you can't be down for everyone. And that's another thing with the ghetto mindset. Like if you come up, you're supposed to bring other folks up. I don't embody that concept. I help people I see who are running toward the finish line. I don't help people who are sitting on their fucking ass. Because if they're sitting on their ass, that means that they don't care about their personal situation and problem as much as they should. So why should I give a fuck? Harsh but true. And ever since I adopted that mindset, there's been a certain clarity, there's been a certain peace, and my life got way better. And for many people, it's like, no, you just need to help your brother. Helping my brother is if like someone gets in an accident and I stop, I see it, and I pull him out the car. You're in an accident. Some shit happened. That to me, that's helping the brother. Donating money to a worthy cause. Volunteering. That's just trying to go out and grab someone and say, look, I have this knowledge and the motif. Because they don't want that. They don't want to work. Don't want to fucking work. That's the biggest problem. Do not want. I'm telling you. I was talking to someone who's becoming a friend. He's another business owner. And when I meet a brother who will be honest about this shit, because I'm not going to tell you what he does. I'm not going to tell you where he is. But he said after two years of his first business, he stopped fucking dealing with black people. He, he just stopped. And I told him, because, you know, get mad at me if you want to. But when you're paying someone 10, 15, 20 bucks an hour and they're underperforming, you feel that shit. You feel that shit. So, we had this talk and he just, he told me some other stuff that may be part of a video because it's too much already. I can't get it in this one. But we had a good conversation and we're going to go to dinner soon. But essentially, when you're dealing with people who see success as an entitlement versus something that is earned... You're going to have fucking problems. You're going to have more problems than you can ever imagine. I tried. I've tried. I've had girlfriends like, hey, why don't you help these young boys? You don't know how much money I have lost trying to help people. You have no clue. And the thing is, I've learned to be more tactful because, once again, when you never owned a business and you never been through that bullshit, you don't know. You just look at the guy or the girl who owns the business as living the life. You don't know what the fuck they're going through. You don't know the struggles. You don't know if they put their whole credit profile on the line or borrow. You have no idea what they did to get there. But you're looking at it as easy because you're envious, you little bitch. But that's it. I'm going to leave this right here. But if you want to change how you think, get the fuck out of that ghetto mindset. Get my audio book, The Hustler's Mindset, Pimping Your Mind for Success. Give you some new nuggets, give you a new ideal on how to change your life. All right, this is Glendon Cameron. Today, business school is in session. Learn how to make money, increase your wealth. One of the biggest problems I have is that people come to the YouTube channel, they'll see me. And they want to get some, but they don't know where to start. So I have solved that problem today. If you're brand new, welcome. We're glad to have you. Look forward to serving you a long, long time. If you want to get this knowledge, if you want to start a business, I have created a blueprint, a roadway for you to actually start making changes in your life because this is one of the things that i have learned when i was doing 30 days to 2500 i learned that there were some people who did better than others and i was like why are these people doing better than other people what's going on with these people and 
what I have discovered, and let's see. Let me go ahead and get that. What I've discovered is that people who came in with a business already, they did really well with 30 days to 2,500. Remarkably well. It was like mind-blowing for some of them. Then there were people who didn't do well. And these were people who did not have a strong mindset or were not in business. So what I've des designed is for you to go through this pathway because essentially when I get someone who's brand new to the channel and they've never had a business, there is so much work that has to be done. I mean, I know there's folks on the internet that makes owning the business, running the business look super easy and it's not. And it's one of the most complicated things that you'll do in your life. But once again, people want the path of least resistance. That is not what we're going to have. So we're going to go here and we're going to go under all right, so this is where you start. This is the uh, blueprint. First thing you're going to do is get the Hustler's Mindset, Pimping Your Mind for Success. That's your free audio book. That's where you're going to start getting that mind correct. Then you're going to move to this. Money Management the Basics of Finance and Wealth Development. Before you get new money, you must optimize the money you already have. If you, as it was said in the part of the live stream this morning, if you don't manage a little bit of money well, you're not going to manage a lot of money well. It's the same person. The only thing that changes is the money. Look at the number of athletes who go broke because they've never learned how to manage money. They never learn how to compartmentalize, how to do the five check and account blueprint. They've not done that. So this is the, the first course you need. Now, I keep telling everybody that. I've had a lot of people who take this course and they booked a consult because they wanted to know more. So this is the course that you need. Then after that, we're going to go to the third course, Becoming the Boss. You have to make this mental shift about being into a producer mode. So this is the third course you will take. And one of the things that I've done is I've priced this stuff so well that, you know, there, there is a few of you who are kind of sitting back, who are emailing me like, Hey, I want to buy these courses. What's the best price you can give me? That never works. Those deals never materialize because they were required for me to sit on email and go back and forth with people all day. And it just typically doesn't work out. Uh, the courses are so economical. All right, this is what you're going to get after becoming the boss. This will be your fourth course, uh, the Power of Six Productivity course. This course will help you get stuff done. This is a habit that you need to develop, how to manage your time, how to get stuff done. When you start a business, there's going to be so many things to do that this course will help you learn how to get stuff done. How to, what's a priority, what's not priority? This course will do it for you. All right. So the fifth course you will get, Scripted Days. This is a life-changing course. I think it's too cheap, but I want you guys to benefit. It will give you the power of written manifestation. It will straighten out your uh, bad habits it will put you on the path of productive success. It will teach you how to, you know, set up a morning ritual, set up an evening ritual, a lot of things. This will be the fifth course. Now, these five courses in the free audio book will build a foundation. When I was doing 30 Days to 2500, I had some students do amazingly well, and some students struggled. The people who did well already had a, a business or be a superior mindset. 
the foundational courses will give you the superior mindset. Let's say you're a person who wants to start a business but have no clue to where to start. This next section is for you. Typically, business success comes from practicing business skills. One of the best ways to do that is by reselling. You got to get your feet wet. This is where you will start with the reselling courses. Uh, this is a collection that gives you the storage auction book, the pimping Craigslist stuff, all of this stuff to get you geared for resale. How to have a great garage sale, all that. Now, once you've gotten the first five courses, your next move will be 30 days to 2,500. This course is for people who need to learn how to sell and how to sell and set up business. It will be thought provoking. This is also a good course for people with established businesses. Remember how I told you the people who had already businesses did extremely well. So go ahead. You know, if you have a business owner, if you go through because 30 days to 2,500 is a long course, it's going to take you about two months to go through it. But it'll be well worth it because in these two months, you're going to learn stuff. It's going to open up your eyes. It's going to create new shifts in how you think and how you do business. All right. Uh, the seventh course will be asking for the money, how to be an Uber salesperson. Now, don't get this course unless you have something to sell. Just reading a book, or reading a book about sales without having something to sell is a waste of time. You need to actually read about it and put this stuff into practice. And once again, uh, for all you folks who keep asking me about the Luponics book, I don't know the name. Can't remember the name of it. All I know is it had a red and black cover. Can't help you. People keep like, man, it sounds dope. What's the name? I don't know the name, man. I don't know the name. Just had to put that out there. All right. And for the business owners, this will be defined as people making money and paying their bills with the proceeds from the business. You know, if you got like a side business or something, and this might be for you, but this is for the business owners. You should get the art of holding on how to set up your legal structure. Structure. If you're a business owner making money, you are a target and you will need to protect yourself. Now, for the people who want to save some money, I have a curated bundle with all the courses except the art of holding to get you started and get your business aspirations. So this is the bundle that includes most of the courses. There you go. So if you are new to the channel and you're like, hey, where do I start? That's the pathway. That's the pathway to get started because from a foundational standpoint, you need to establish the foundation before you get off into trying to start your business. Because like I said, you know, I, I got a ton of feedback from 30 days to 2,500. And if I had been thinking, I would have did this like way sooner. But essentially taking those lessons derived from that course, you got people who are not mentally prepared to start a business. It's, it doesn't mean that they can't become mentally prepared. It's just a process. It's going to take them a little time to, you know, like you got kids. All kids don't learn at the same rate. You got some kids who learn slower, and but they can still get there. And essentially, this is what you will be going through with the foundational courses. They will help you get your mind right. This will help you get your mind right. The DSL Chronicles, hell yeah, they ain't going to buy people. I mean, seriously, I, I, I pretty much ignore those folks because I've been down that path before. Typically, the people who are like, I want this course, I want this course, I want this course, and who want to talk to me, uh, the number one reason that people want to talk to me is to get permission to do what they think they want to do. This like, well, if Glendon thinks this is cool. No, you, you need to give yourself permission. You need to validate yourself. You need to um, believe in yourself. Mike Ellie, this ain't no theory. This ain't no theory, man. These courses have come from my business experience. 
There is no theory here. Let's see. Anthony Johnson, me and my cousin got busy today. We had a hard time starting our generator. It wouldn't start for our mobile watch, but we strung it together. Made a hundred bucks for a few hours. See, once you go through this transformation, once you get that first good sale, that first load of money, it becomes addictive. It becomes very addictive. Now, what I'm going to do for the, you know, starting next week, there's going to be a lot of new training. So I'm going to do a video probably Sunday or Monday talking about the new training and how you can get a hold of that. Now, if you have never started a business, this stuff is good for you, especially 30 days to 2,500. And the money management course, I've heard, got a lot of feedback from that. People like it. It has helped them manage their finances because here's the thing. If you go ahead and start making a lot of money with your bad money management habits right now, it's the money's just you're not going to get the best use of the money. You you need to learn how to hold on to money, and this is what the course teaches you. So, you know, next week we will get into um the, the new stuff, but the new stuff will build on this. It won't be the same information. It'll be new information and more of it for business owners. I don't really have a lot of courses for business owners other than the art of holding maybe 30 days to 2,500 and asking for the sale. Those are only courses for business owners. Uh, a lot of this stuff is side hustle stuff. Uh, beginning business person. So once again, just go ahead. You know, if you're brand new to the channel, you just found this. Welcome. Thank you. Appreciate you. Um, this is what we're going to do. Michael Gardner. So this is true. This guy I'm working for in real estate made like 15K and spent it all. People, that thirst, you know, that, that, that thirst is a big, big problem. That build up thirst of you wanting stuff, you want to live a certain lifestyle. Once again, the money management course will help you with that. Let's see where we are. Cool. Because what I, this is going to be a very short live stream because I'm going to take it down and I'm going to put it at the end of all the newer videos. So people who are coming into the fold, you know, the new folks, because I got a lot of new folks. I get, you know, emails and stuff like, hey, Glendon, man, I'm really excited. I like what you're saying. But where do I start? This is where you start. Okay. So all of the information is below. You can start with your first five foundational courses. Then start going wild on the other stuff. And very soon I will have some new information that will build on these principles that will take you to the next level. So with that, I will see you guys later.